Hi, I'm Trevor Lund of RevTrev.com, and in this week's episode of RevTrev TV, we're continuing our discussion with Mike Stickler of The Vision Group. And you can check out his website at TheVisionGroupLTD.com. And we're talking about fundraising, we're talking about grant writing, we're talking about a whole lot of uh, things about the Christian church today and, and uh, during the series. And today, uh, we want to talk about how the economy is affecting ministries. Um, Mike, how's it going? Like, what? <laughs> I, I haven't seen the statistics. I can guess what's going on, um, and I want to hear your insight on 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 you know should like we're in a kingdom economy, right? Like we, Jesus needed money. Throw them, throw the you know catch the fish, and it's in the mouth. Like why aren't we, <laughs> why are right. we concerned about the economy? But how how do you see the economy affecting ministries? It, it like. Practically today, what's what's going on in, in reality? Well, I want to touch on just what you said first. Um, we need to be going where Jesus is directing. Mm. You know, the apostles didn't find uh, the coin in the fish's mouth apart from Jesus telling them to go do something that was absolutely, if you think about it, wild. Crazy, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just wild. It was upon his direction. So first, when we talked about this in the last episode, um, just having that abiding relationship and, and working in the uh, direction that God wants you to be in. Mm -hmm. Now, more practically what's happening, and I, I look at all the studies, um, you, you've got two different groups in essence. You have people, the Joe Average Christian, who uh, gives out of their income. You and I are that person. We give out of the income that we have based on our paycheck or what income we have in some kind of fixed way. And we give our tithe or our first fruits and then a little extra on top of that. Um, and what's what has held steady um, through the whole program, or, or I'm sorry, since 2008, is that kind of giving. Really? Yeah, we've held pretty we've held pretty consistent with that, especially with Christians. Well, I just I just saw with like Barna did a study a few years ago that said six point two percent of Christians tithe. So are you talking about just the levels of people giving consistently are about the same, or they are? Um, okay. the, the consistency is um, well. First off, I agree with Barna. Most of the most Christians don't give at the level they're supposed to, and that that's a good indication. Of, again, if you remember, byproduct of vision, mm -hmm. it's a good indication of their understanding of their vision. Not just good teaching on what the Bible says about money. Most churches do that. It's really about having a compelling vision that that um, the congregation members want to sacrifice for. Mm -hmm. Secondly. Um, Major donors, big givers, these are people that give more than $5,000 a year. And, and I'm going to back up for a second and, and explain that the average is still $10 per person um, in the offering plate, or roughly $1,500 a year. It's about $1,500 a year is how much people give wow. per adult <laughs> okay, across the country. So we can all brag if we want, but that's really not very high. That's, ooh. That's, um, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and so if you've got a family, you know, it's husband and wife, they're giving about $3,000 a year on average. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and those are, uh, you know, across the United States. I don't, I don't know what the Canada averages are, but I bet they're pretty similar. When you get to major donors, major donors and foundations give out of their wealth, mm -hmm. not out of their income. Interesting dynamic. So what they do is they give based on how much money they have in the stock market, how much money that they have in, invested in real estate. Based on their investments and the burn rate of those investments is how they give. And of course, um, the average has been that they've lost over 30%. And so the giving from major donors and foundations is down 30%. Mm. Uh, where that's really impacting groups is parachurches, because parachurches thrive on foundations and, and uh, major donors. So that's how it's affecting, um, and there's a couple of health problems in the body of Christ with that. One, major donors need to be giving out of their income not and their wealth, mm -hmm. not just one side of it. And... Those of us that are Joe average person, we need to be giving more consistently and more sacrificially 
And then the third health problem is we as leaders need to be sharing a, a compelling vision that motivates those people to be part of what God's doing in our community. Those are the health problems in the church that we got to face. Hmm. I had about six questions go through my head when you were talking about that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> what, what, well, is it, is it, so what, what can a, uh, a leader in a ministry do? Like if, if I'm in parachurch, let's start with parachurch. Um, if my biggest source is those big donors, can I diversify? Is there more ways for me to get, get, bring in the, the income that we need? Absolutely. The first thing we need to do, whether you're a parachurch or a church, is diversify our income sources. Mm. Uh, one of the advices that we give is that um, on average, every ministry should be taking in a third of their money from Joe Average constituent donor, a third of their money from major donors, 10% of their money from uh, uh, grants and foundations, 10% of their money from associations, meaning whether they're part of a denomination or a, a group association of some sort. Okay. And the balance of that, believe it or not, through corporate sponsorship. Oh. Yeah. Um, you, it's amazing what you can do with corporate sponsors and how much they'll want to be involved if you do it, if you approach it correctly. So if you have a diversified income stream like that, then all of a sudden, when we're faced with uh, economic struggles and the fa and the major donors um, reduce their income, it can balance. Um, opposed to having all eggs in one basket, it all starts to balance over time. If you have a large number of constituent donors, um, and this was faced when 9-11 happened, um, the constituent donors, vast, uh, something like 50% of them changed their giving from for a short period of time from local groups to 9-11 causes. Mm. And it, it made uh, the Red Cross rich, but mm -hmm. it, it just damaged um, a whole bunch of other effective work. So by diversifying your income streams and being intentional about that, um, you end up having a lot better um, health, financial health. And then spiritual health, the bottom line for spiritual health is we just need to start making disciples. Mm. Uh, would a church have that similar formula, that, like for for uh, a parachurch, or should would their balance be a little bit different? Well, uh, in any organization, it's going to lean one direction or another. A, a church leans towards um, constituent donors or Joe Average uh, gift giving, you know, in the offering box mm -hmm. or the offering plate. Major donors, I'm sorry, parachurches skew towards major donors. So what we have to realize is, yes, we still have to diversify our income. Um, the, the church planters, and I'm going to make some people mad right now, but the church planters tell everybody that they have to go and uh, plant your church in a suburban area, um, build up your community until you've got enough people in three to five years, and then you'll build your first building, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem with that is, that's all based on economics. And that the problem with that is that leaves all the inner city people to die and go to hell. Mm -hmm. Where the inner city pastors have already figured out they have to diversify their income. So I know pastors who are developing real estate, building apartments. Mm. Uh, I know pastors who are, have businesses going on. I know one group, a major church in Dallas, that's actually um, helping with lending money, short-term um, loans. Because their people keep going to these uh, uh, check writing places, mm -hmm. um, just just start creating and coming up with more diversified methodology to bring an income into your organization. Uh, the other thing, inner city people realize is that it doesn't matter how many people come to their church, they'll never have enough economic power to drive some of their vision. Mm -hmm. So they have to look outside of it. They write grants. They do lots of things. So what about? Uh I've, I've probably got more to do with rural churches too, like little small town pastors. And it's, uh, what else could they do? Is that, <laughs> I'm just, you know, it's, you don't have the opportunity that you do even in an inner city when you're, when you're in a small community, but is, would that be more grant writing? Would that be more, what, what other, how else could they diversify? Yeah, I think, um, 
in some cases you have to reach outside of your community. Mm. So you need to, uh, you need to take the time to develop um, funders outside of your community and get them engaged in a compelling vision within your community. Mm. So at, as an example, I have a friend um, who uh, ministers in ranches and he, he's actually phenomenal. I'm, I'm just very impressed with what he does. And he raises money from city folks, mm -hmm. support what he's doing, because he realizes in the ranching community and the cowboy community and all, all across the, um, the Northwest, or I'm sorry, the North, uh, it, it's just not, it, he's never going to raise the money out of this very um, spread out group of people. And then also good health training, just making disciples of, of folks over time. Uh, if you make good disciples, they'll, they believe in what you're doing and want to help support it. Hmm. That's very good advice. Um, I think we're going we're gonna to close it up there for this interview. And uh, next time I want to talk about your ministry, about the vision group. Uh, you've got all kinds of resources, all kinds of tools, um, all kinds of training. And uh, I want to find out more about it myself. So <laughs> thank you very much, Mike. Um, hey. This is Mike Stickler, of the, uh, the managing partner of the vision group. And his website is thevisiongroupltd.com. Be sure to go check it out there. I'm Trevor Lund. Thank you for watching this episode. Goodbye. This episode has been brought to you by Expectancy Press, resources that impart hope and empower destiny. When you choose to purchase products from expectancypress.com, you're supporting the work of Expectancy Ministries. Are you a little afraid to do what God's told you to do? Get a copy of How Big Is Your Butt by Trevor Lund today.